praise for God. Up with what follows it. 
which is the lack of receptivity of God's people, leading to the consequential destruction. But the hope of a surviving remnant and a holy root out of which God will establish a greater kingdom. But Isaiah was called before he started prophesying. It's important for me to point this out because Isaiah did not pro begin prophesying before his call took place. It took place in this sequence of events in chapter 6 to prepare Isaiah to be used as a mouthpiece through which God would speak God's messages. In other words, it's important to keep in mind that God does not just throw people in the water. God prepares those who God wants to be available for service. They may not know it or recognize it as preparation when God is preparing and when they're going through it. But God is nonetheless doing it. Last week we noted two coals that God uses to refine us for service. One was truth, that is God's word. And the other was trouble. These two coals begin, begin to develop in people the internal resources, the character that they need in order to respond appropriately when God is looking for an available instrument to use. Isaiah's coals purged him immediately, but yours may be gradual. In other words, it may be that your preparation, your burning coal, comes through a period of time of gradually internalizing the principles of God and gradually replacing the devil's lies with God's truth. It may be that your preparation, your coal burning, comes through extended seasons of trials that test your faith and cause you to have to trust God more. But you know that once you have had a revelation of how awesome God is, well, amen, well. and once you have realized how totally unworthy you are, God immediately begins to apply coals to your life to get you ready. Some folk wonder why it is that as soon as they make a commitment to Christ, that that's when trouble knocks on their door. But just know that the enemy is trying to destroy what God is doing and what he means for evil. God is working as a coal to prepare you to serve him. The coal, that coal melts the wax in our ears so that we can hear God's voice clearly. That is that coal that melts our cold hearts so we can be sensitive to the direction that God wants us to go. And it's that coal that polishes us up so that we can accurately reflect the image of God. But then Isaiah hears a voice. Isaiah clearly identifies that voice that he's hearing as the voice of the Lord. God calls Isaiah. In the midst of healing from burning coals, Isaiah calls. I mean, God calls him. There are several call narratives in the Bible where God called people. God called Noah and told him to build an ark. God called Abram and told him to leave his land of origin. God called Gideon and told him that he was a mighty warrior. God called Jeremiah and told him he was to be a prophet for the nations. God called Paul and told him he was to be a, a, a gospel preacher for the Gentiles. We know that the eternal God, the God who can do anything, make anything, change anything, for God's own reasons, chooses to use people to get God's work done. Amen. In spite of God's sovereignty, God's control of the universe, there is a human responsibility to respond to the call of God. God did not create us to be automatons or robots or even angels at God's beck and call. When we were made, we were made in the Imago Dei, the image of God. We were given the responsibility of responding and following when God calls. Amen. The first thing I want to point out to you today is that God calls everybody. Amen. God calls everybody. It may seem 
came from the call narratives that I just described that, 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 that it's only certain people that God calls. Oh, no. But it's, it's, it's special people. Amen. It's, but, but, but it's not just certain people. Because guess what? In God's sight, everybody is special. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, when we hear the word called, we automatically think of called to the preaching ministry. But when I say God calls everybody, first, I, first of all, I mean that the first call that we experience is to salvation. Amen. Salvation is offered to everybody. That's why Peter says it's not God's will that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. It's offered to everybody, but only some, and God knows who, will respond. Amen. When a person opens their heart to receive the gospel, it's because they have come to understand through revelation who Jesus really is. And they've come to renewal by asking for forgiveness for their sins. The Bible says that if any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. All things are passed away. Behold, all things have become new. The call to salvation is the first call on everybody, on anybody's life, and everybody is called. But then, but this is where a lot of people stop. But, the, but inherent in the call to salvation is a greater call. A call to grow in grace and a call to serve the body of Christ and to do work in the world, to do works for God. When Paul talks in Ephesians 2 it's about salvation, he says, For it is by grace you have been saved, through faith. And this not from yourselves, it is the gift of God, not by works so that no one can boast. But this is the key. For we are God's handiwork, created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. What I want you to see is that inherent in our salvation is not just forgiveness from sin and shame, not just redirection from eternal punishment to eternal reward, not just the benefits of God's presence and companionship, as wonderful as those things are, not just a relationship with the God of the universe, but inherent in the call to salvation is work that God sends each one of us to do. God did not save us to sit. God did not save us to solve. God did not save us to watch over other people working. Amen. God did not save us to wait here and sit for eternal reward. But God saved us and called each one of us to do something. Well, well. To do a work for God. And you can't, you can't do my work. And I can't do your work. Everybody is called. But the question is, will you answer the call? When God called Isaiah, Isaiah heard God speaking, and God said, who will go for us? Who's us? <laughs> Scholars disagree, but I believe that since God does not consult with angels or other members of the heavenly host to figure out what to do or who to send, <laughs> that this is privileged communication. That this is communication within the Godhead, among the persons of the Trinity. God leaves the question open, awaiting the response of the human instrument. It's a divine setup. Somebody say setup. Designed for Isaiah to respond. Have you ever been in a situation where something needed to be done? There were several people in the room with you, and none of them were qualified to do it except you. Yeah. And the question is asked, who's going to do this for us? And you know the angst that rises in the pit of your stomach when you know you are the obvious choice. And then there's this pregnant pause until you finally sheepishly raise your hand. Amen. Well, Isaiah is the only human in the conversation. So Isaiah, who is clear about who's speaking, and in light of all that God has done for Isaiah, 
God, after the question is asked, sees no other choice but to answer in the affirmative. <laughs> Hallelujah. Three quick things about answering the call of God. First, Isaiah had to be sure he was responding to the right voice. Beloved, well, John tells us that many spirits have gone out into the world. You know how people like to say I'm spiritual. They're spiritual people. Amen. But are they following the right spirit? The reality is that there's a lot of voices calling for your attention. And we have to make sure that we're responding to the voice of God and not other voices. One of the ways that the enemy confuses and confounds the work of God is by speaking in surround sound. Amen. Stereophonic surround sound. With a multiplicity of voices that sound legitimate. Amen. But, but, but there may not be the voice of God. Some of those voices come from outside of us. Popular trends. Rewards such as money. Press material things, pressures from people around you, positive or negative, demands and other responsibilities pulling on you. How many of you have ever felt pulled in about six directions at once? People that want you to please them. Don't get into something just because somebody thinks you'd be good at it. small 
things. And then he said, if, you, if you're faithful in a few things, if you're faithful in the small things, he said, I'll make you rule over many. And when you're obedient in the small things, you, his voice becomes clearer. Hallelujah. You spend time with God, you learn his word, then you apply that word in simpler situations. God begins to make God's voice clearer and clearer so that when the bigger things come along, you don't have to hire an interpreter to figure out what God is saying. Free. Amen. Amen. Then the other thing is that you got to get quiet with God sometimes. you got to get quiet before God sometimes. You know, sometimes we people, we're not comfortable with silence. We're not comfortable when something's not around us. I, you know, I know sometimes we, you, you get home and, and you got to have some noise in the background. But, 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 but sometimes you just got to get quiet before the Lord. Amen. Sometimes we get with God and it's all about our list of requests. We're so busy talking to God, God can't get a word in edgewise. So the only voice we learn to recognize in the conversation is our own voice. And we end up answering our own call, which is often biased and based on what I want. But you have to go when you get quiet before God, when you just hush for a moment, so I say hush, hush for a moment, God will begin to use that still small voice and begin to speak into your spirit the things God wants you to know and the things God wants you to be about. So listen, because God's voice is not always in the noise, not always in the earthquake, not always in the, in, in, in the, in the tremendous things, but sometimes. Hallelujah. God might just teach you something you didn't know. If you can turn down the volume of your thoughts and opinions. I know y'all got great opinions. I got great opinions, but God sometimes has to tell me to turn down my opinions. Amen. And somebody say amen. Turn down my opinions so that I can hear his voice. And God might just change your perspective. But you got to listen and make sure you're listening to the right voice. Then when God calls, you have to answer when God calls you. See, God is a God of timing. Sometimes we get ahead of God. We answer God and God hasn't said anything yet. Amen. Because God is still preparing you for when God is going to ask. And don't answer a question that hasn't been asked yet. Sometimes we answer because we think we've got God figured out. So we go forging ahead, and then once we've got everything worked out according to our plan, usually our plan or somebody else's plan, we come back and ask God to bless our plan. Amen. But how many know that God's ways are not our ways? Well, well, well. And God's thoughts are not our thoughts. Yeah. But we get anxious, like Saul did. Amen. And in the walls seem to be, the enemy seems to be closing in. And we go ahead and do what we think ought to be done. Amen. But we need to learn that when, to, 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 to go to God when, and when God says go and move when God says move and don't get ahead of God because they that wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall follow up with wings like eagles. They shall they shall walk and not faint. But then there's the other extreme. Sometimes we go too quick. Sometimes we procrastinate. Somebody say procrastinate. Oh, no. Oh, no. I had to repent on this one. God says, I want you to do so and so. And we're like, you know, I'll get around to it, Lord. I'm not quite ready yet, Lord. I, I'll let you know when I'm ready. And then I, I'm sure the answer will be yes, but, but I'll do it when I get ready. Amen. But Isaiah immediately stepped up and said, here am I, send me. You can't serve God on more timetable. you got to answer the call when it's extended. Because the Bible says tomorrow is not promised to any of us. Today is the acceptable day of salvation. 
salvation. Why do we procrastinate? We procrastinate because of fear. We procrastinate because we feel overwhelmed by all the other things that are on our schedule or, or because we're prioritizing something else over what God has told us to do. Amen. Yeah. All of these things equate to not trusting that God is able to keep us or to keep that which we trust God with. But I want to let somebody know today that there's nothing too hard for God. You don't have to hesitate. You can step out on faith because I've got you in my hand. When folk are closing in you on you, I've got you in my hand. When you feel intimidated by what's in front of you, remember I've got what behind you. When you, when you can't see your way, remember I can see everything. And if you just walk by faith and not by sight, you can make it. So don't should always be yes Lord. Throughout the scripture, the people of God always express their assent to the word of God by saying, Amen. 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 Yes, Lord. Amen. I'm here. I'll go. Amen is an expression of deep agreement. And we sort of spit out Amen. Amen. We sort of spit out Amen. Uh, after every other word, but it really is a word that means deep within my spirit, deep in my soul. I'm in agreement with what's being said. I'm saying yes with everything that's within me. I'm saying it because I've had a vision of how awesome God is. And after realizing that God is awesome and that that awesome God has chosen broken insignificant mess of me to do God's bidding. And after that same God has peeled off the layers of my sin and my shame and made me to reflect God's glory again. And after realizing that this same God is working in my life and is on my side, how can I not from the very depths of my being I got to go. 